biblical stories. The teacher walked by and noticed one little boy was drawing an airplane. What Bible story are you drawing, she asked. This is the flight into Egypt, <laughs> the little boy said. See, here's Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. And this, he said, points to the front of the plane, it's Pontius. He's the pilot. <laughs> Pontius the pilot. Would you bow your heads with me, dear Lord, this morning as we have an opportunity to share the word to bring these morsels of truth into the family in this place, Lord. We just pray that you will guide and direct the word into the hearts of your people and that they will cause the effect that your, that your will is uh, for them to cause in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the sermon is The Credential um, of Gabriel. Gabriel's credential. Now you don't remember that, do you, from three years ago? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, any, anyway, it's Gabriel's credential. Now usually a credential is the evidence of authority. That's what that means. Or status, or rights, or entitlement uh, to privileges or the like. I have a credential as a minister. Um, Ruthie has a credential. She's an RN. And that allowed her to do certain things. She could stick you with a needle. And <laughs> she probably stuck. How many people did you ever stick? Thousands of them, right? <laughs> and your mother was a nurse. And your daughters. No, Three not your mother. Daughters are both nurses and they stick people too. And how would you like to go through life without her being stuck? I mean, you wouldn't survive. They stick you and you, and you get well, right? Anyway, that's a credential. Uh, anything that provides a basis for confidence in that person or belief or credit, etc. And there are only two angels in the Bible that are named, unless you want to count the fallen angel. He's named. I don't even mention his disgusting name, though. But Michael, who is thought of as a warrior angel, and Gabriel, who is thought of as the messenger angel. We first see Gabriel in the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 15 to 17. It says, while I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, there before me stood one who looked like a man. And I heard a man's voice from the Uli calling Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. As he came near the place I was standing, I was terrified and felt prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. And the angel explained the vision then to Daniel. That's the first time we see Gabriel. I think we only see him three times in the Bible that I can find. So you fast forward to a few months before the birth of Christ, first Gabriel appears to Zechariah the priest to announce the coming of the birth of John the Baptist. And we pick up the story in Luke chapter 1 and verse 11. It says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. Fear. And this was the message. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. Verse 15, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So then a doubt crept in. Verse 18, then Zechariah asked the angel, 
How can I believe? How can I be sure of this? How can I be sure of what you're telling me? I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in years. In other words, what I'm seeing and what the world presents is not going to back up what you said. So how can I believe what you're telling me when what I see is we're beyond the age of having children? And this is the credential. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. That's a powerful statement. I am Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And then a judgment comes in verse 20. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens. Because you did not believe my words. Which will come true at the appointed time. By the way, the name Gabriel means God is my strong man. That's literally what that means in the, from the Hebrew. In this event, Gabriel scared Zechariah. Zechariah trembled with fear. He was scared. Gabriel scares everybody that he appears to in the Bible. They're always afraid of him. They, they're, they're, the angels are scary people, scary beings. But in this event, Gabriel brought good news with a lot of detail. In this event, Gabriel brought a message of punishment for doubting. Because you didn't believe my message. You're not going to be able to speak until this child is born. So he brought a message of punishment. Not because Gabriel's words were important, not because of that, but because the message came from God and he refused to believe it. Or he wasn't sure if he wanted to believe it. So he doesn't get punished because the message was his words, because they weren't. They were God's words. Gabriel only brings what God tells him to bring. And you're going to be silent for a year because you doubt it. In verse 19, Gabriel reveals his credential. I am Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God. So next we see Gabriel announcing to Mary that she would be the mother of Jesus. This is the last time we see Gabriel by name in the Bible that I can find. So this is in going down. We're, we're all in Luke uh, chapter 1. This is going down at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth, Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And by the way, Mary was also descended from David. Verse 28, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are fought for our file, who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. And the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. She was afraid. All three people he appeared to were afraid. He always has to calm them down. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and, will, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. God sent Gabriel again with an important message. Not Gabriel's message, God's message. Mary was troubled. She was scared. He said, he had to say, don't be afraid. He had to calm people down before he gave her the message. But she was troubled. Then he tells her what will happen. And then in verse 38, she said, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. What a difference between her response and Zechariah's response, she said, yeah, whatever God wants to happen, and, and, and I think in the King James says, be it done unto me according to thy word. I think it's what, what happens. But Gabriel is a scary angel. He scares people. Daniel 
Zechariah and Mary accepted the challenge. Mary did not doubt. Did not doubt. Mary accepted it. They were all afraid. Gabriel had to calm them down. Fear not. Don't be afraid. But Zechariah's response was he was doubting. He accepted it because it happened. And he couldn't, and he couldn't speak. He said, uh-oh, this must be going to happen because I can't speak now. Mary's reaction? They were both afraid. But Zechariah doubted and didn't believe at first. Mary was troubled at the greeting, but her only concern was, how is this going to happen? How will this happen? In other words, I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man. How is this going to happen that I will have this child? And then he explained to her how it would happen. And the Holy Spirit will come over you and you will conceive, etc. So she accepted the will of God. She accepted his will, as revealed by the angel Gabriel. In verse 38, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. She consented. There was no resistance. Then the angel left her. Now Mary was probably 14 or 15 years old at that time. She was a young girl. There would be a social stigma if she was to be with child and unmarried. She was pledged to be married. That's what they did in those days. But she put that aside. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. This is from God. The message is from an angel that scared me at first. But her life must have been one of closeness to God. One of she must have had a prayer life and been, you know, she must have known the Lord. She must have known God to say, yeah, okay, may it be, may it be done unto me according to your word. Yes, I'll do it. I'll accept this challenge. And it was huge. Nowadays it wouldn't be so huge, but back then that was a really big, big deal. So first of all, God sent Gabriel. The people he was sent to were afraid, all of them. He described John as great in the sight of the Lord. Then he described Jesus as great. That is great in his own power, in other words. And he cited his credential. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I've been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. His authority came from his nearness to God. I stand in his presence. He's not some free spirit off on a tangent deciding what to say and who to say it to. Gabriel brings only what God sends him to say. He only goes to those to whom God is directing him to go to. Gabriel's messages were to come true. They were from God. It wasn't the angel's idea. God said to him, go and give this message. His messages always come true. Zechariah would be unable to speak until the day of the birth of John, his son. It came true. Elizabeth bore a son in her old age, and John would have a powerful ministry before God. He was John the Baptist, as we know him today. He called people to repent. His baptism was a baptism of repentance, and he was the one to baptize Jesus. Jesus said, you know, baptize me. And he said, well, you should be, I should be baptized by you. He said, no, go ahead and baptize me. And he did. Mary then bore a son, Jesus, who was the Son of God, and who would be the sacrificial lamb on the cross of Calvary that paid the, paid the penalty for our sins. I could say a whole lot more just about that, but you all know, you've all been, you're all born again people. The authority of Gabriel was based on the fact 
that he stands in the presence of God and that God sent him with the message. We don't know what happened to Gabriel. He's, maybe he's in the old angel's retirement complex. We don't know what happened to him. He must be retired because we don't hear anything more from him. Although there are other messages and inspirations, but none of them by an, by a, an angel named Gabriel. We stand in the presence of God. Amen. Let that sink in. We are born again. The Spirit of God, when we are born again, comes into us. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. We can make the same claim as Gabriel. We stand in the presence of God. We stand in that presence. Just as Gabriel. That was his credential. And we have the credential. We stand in God's presence. Yes, we do. Our credential is our nearness to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. And we have a message. We have the credential. We stand in God's presence. And we have a message. Romans 10. Beginning in verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And in 1 Peter 3.15, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And 1 Peter 1, 10-12, Concerning this salvation, the prophets, who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look in to these things. You have the credential. You have it. You have the same credential. You are the messenger. You have the message. Amen. And you're sent by God. Not only that, but you have experience. You can tell your testimony how God got your attention and how it was that you were born again. It's part of the message. And you're sent by God. You are sent by God. Mark 6, 15, 16, 15, where it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So what happened to Gabriel? He retired. We have the message. Gabriel doesn't have the message. It's passed on to us. The credential came to us now. We have the message. Gabriel doesn't have to do that anymore. God passed that responsibility on to you and I. Amen? Amen. Do you have a message from God? Yeah, you do. You, your, your life is a message from God, at least it should be. Are you carrying the message? Well, that's up to you. You should be. Do you scare people? <laughs> no. That's an advantage you have over Gabriel. He tried to calm him. He had to calm people down before he gave him the message. You don't have to do that. People are desperate for this message. I brought it to them on their deathbed hours before, they, before their demise. Desperate. We don't scare people. <laughs> We bless people. How do people react to you? 
when you bring the message. Well, if, if you bring the message. Depends on the person. And what state, you know, some people are going to say, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Everybody doesn't accept it. You can kind of tell who will. You can kind of tell if you do this. Who's going to receive that message and who's desperate for it and who needs it? I mean, everybody needs it. But some people, it's critical to them. Some people, it's critical. And those are the ones that God will get your attention and say, I need you to give the message to that person. It could be a family. It could be a worker, co-worker. It could be a, a husband, a, a wife. A, it could be a you know, somebody that lives across the street. But that's our responsibility to carry that message and we have the credential to do it. We stand in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Would you stand? Lord, it's been good to be able to share this message three years ago and again today. And I pray that it will have the effect that you want it to have, that we will be those who carry the message. We already have the credential, Lord. We just need to carry that message, Lord. We need to carry it because there are desperate people who need to hear it, who are dying without you, Lord. And so we pray that that message will bear heavily on each one of us, Lord, and as the opportunities come up, Lord, which they do, that we will be ready to carry the message and blessings will follow because of it. And now, as we prepare to go to the fellowship hall and consume the morsels, Lord, that you have provided, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and uh, we pray that you will bless the food, the fellowship with each other, Lord, and we just pray that you have give us a blessed day now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Head right on over there and hog everything in. So